Hi everyone, welcome back to Living Well with Dr. Thanuki. Today we will be talking about obesity, its uh, epidemiology, diagnosis and how you can prevent and treat it. So uh, obesity is a worldwide epidemic where 1.4 billion people worldwide uh, who are age 20 or older are diagnosed with being overweight and 500 million are obese. In Sri Lanka, 34.4% are either obese or overweight. Obesity used to be only common in uh, high-income countries, but now it's prevalent among low-income and middle-income countries as well. And uh, the diseases that uh, arise from obesity, including heart disease, hypertension, diabetes type 2, gallstones, um, and uh, various cancers, including breast, colon, endometrial cancers, uh, breathing problems, musculoskeletal disabilities, all of those uh, you know, have a deleterious effect on the economies of those countries uh, because of the costs associated with the treatment of these diseases. So while there are some uh, genetic or you know, familial causes for obesity including hypothyroidism, Prader-Willi syndrome and Cushing syndrome, uh, majority uh, is caused by a positive energy balance because of the advance in technology where people you know, move less and eat more and are sedentary, it leads to fat depositing on our bodies um, and that leads to all these diseases associated with obesity. So the pattern in which your body fat is deposited matters. So there are two types, there is the gynoid type or in the uh, de deposited in the gluteofemoral region and that is metabolically inactive. Uh, there is the android type or the male pattern where it is uh, deposited in the trunk or in the uh, visceral organs uh, around the abdomen that is called the metabolically active or the male pattern and uh, that is leading to a constellation of um, diseases including metabolic syndrome, heart disease, type 2 diabetes and uh, uh, many other uh, comorbidities. The major reason behind obesity is positive energy balance where you uh, expend less calories than you consume and it is deposited as fat in your body. Obesity or having an increased amount of fat in your body is a state of inflammation where you release immune proteins uh, that cause uh, uh, you to de develop diseases like heart disease. There is also an association between obesity and obstructive sleep apnea because people who are obese uh, have uh, uh, decreased uh, capacity of their lung volumes in the, in the recumbent position because uh, the fat mass compresses the lung from expanding. This leads to hypoxemia and, uh, which is a state of low oxygen and uh, the person from waking up in the middle of the sleep again leading to uh, sleep deprivation. And sleep deprivation again leads to a uh, you know, cascade of hormonal changes which contribute to um, eating more and uh, inflammatory states and you know, worsen the obesity. Males who have uh, 40 inches or above on the waist circumference ratio and females who have uh, 35 inches or above uh, have an increased likelihood of uh, developing metabolic uh, syndrome related uh, complications from obesity. There are several ways to uh, measure your body fat percentage including skin fall thickness and uh, also bioelectrical impedance and DEXA scan and uh, here at BodyDoc we have uh, the in-body analysis which is 99% accurate for checking your body fat percentage. Women tend to store more fat than men so uh, if you have a body fat percentage of more than 32% uh, you are on the obesity category and uh, for men it's 25% uh, or higher. There are several ways to control and uh, to treat obesity. There's behavioral therapy where you, you know, incorporate good practices to your lifestyle. There is pharmacological uh, treatment uh, with drugs like Olistat, uh, but they have uh, so many side effects including diarrhea, flatulence, bloating, uh, because their mechanism is through uh, blocking the dietary fat absorption and it does work to a certain extent but because of the side effects um, it has uh, problems and there's also a, a surgical option uh, which is bariatric surgery and uh, it is good in preventing uh, di diabetes type 2 in people with uh, obesity and leading to heart disease as well. Uh, the last option is exercise and we'll be talking about exercise. The recommended uh, dose for exercise for obese people is about 60 minutes per day and about 250 minutes per week uh, on average and that too uh, you will need uh, additional volumes of exercise uh, to keep the weight off. All the resistant training exercises are, and all the strength training exercises are beneficial for muscular endurance and also for physical function. 
cardiovascular endurance exercise or cardio it's uh, more uh, important in energy expenditure and uh, keeping the weight of uh, obese individuals. So it has also been found that individuals who engage in um, physical activity apart from exercise maybe in, uh, during their leisure time or in their occupation uh, have uh, a chance of staying uh, lean uh, for a much longer duration because of a phenomenon called non exercise activity thermogenesis. It's called NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And because of that, uh, those individuals uh, who walk, stand and uh, you know, have uh, labor uh, sort of uh, occupations tend to burn more calories on an average about 350 calories more than uh, a sedentary counterpart. And uh, they are successful at keeping their weight off at about um, uh, 35 pounds to 16 kilos per year. Because of this neat phenomena, it's very important to incorporate more physical activity as in to keep moving more throughout the day uh, by taking more steps and you know taking longer out and then doing more work at home. Uh, all those will uh, uh, contribute to a cal more calories burned during the day that will help you stay leaner and prevent obesity. You need about 3,500 calories to burn a pound of fat. So a calorie deficit a day of about 500 to 1,000 would lead to uh, you losing one to two pounds a week. As you continue to lose weight, uh, the rate at which you lose weight will slow down because your metabolism slows down and equations tend to over predict it. So you, you will have to change your workout and eating pattern once again uh, to have continuous weight loss. Nutrition plays a key role in weight management, so it's important to uh, pick a diet prescribed by a physician or a registered dietitian and to choose one that is based on evidence. So to avoid high car carbohydrates, high fats, uh, ones that are low in uh, fiber, uh, th that would help. But it's, it's really important to pick a diet that you can adhere to in the long run, as in uh, very low calorie diets and very low carbohydrate diets even though they will have like immediate results it will be very difficult to stick to them in the long run and to make them uh, incorporated into your uh, you know lifestyle pattern because weight loss is not a quick fix uh, that you can do in a couple of days it's a you know long term thing and it's a lifelong journey to maintain your weight and uh, small attainable changes have to be uh, made uh, in goal size steps uh, for you to get there. So the goal is to lose about 5 to 10 percent of your initial body weight in a uh, period of three to six months with intervention from physicians and dietitians and also uh, uh, taking steps to measure your body weight uh, frequently and uh, having behavioral modifications in achieving it. It is also uh, good to add uh, resistance training uh, to your workout program to build uh, muscular strength and physical function. Uh, so uh, it's uh, important to target both upper body muscles and lower body muscles few times a week. Thank you once again for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please comment below or contact us for an appointment. Uh, please be sure to uh, like us on social media uh, and uh, share them. Uh, also, if you haven't done already, please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon for notifications. I hope to be back next week with another topic. Thank you. I joined Body Rock uh, with the intention of losing weight. Um, I was at 121 kilos and within the course of seven months I was able to drop to 99 with the help of the personal trainers as well as the facilities these guys offered. Um, and being attached to one of the international organizations, the daily stressors, the workload, it, this transformation helped me with all of that in terms of making better decisions as well as uh, overall management as well as making me feel good about myself. So it's definitely something anybody can do if they put their will to it. And I would definitely encourage you to uh, embark on this journey of weight loss.